You're muted, dear. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Okay. I just was sitting over here thinking like, this lady has went above and beyond to just care for this family and just wanted to do something nice. You know, let's hope that maybe if they've been to the same judge and stuff, if it's taken a long time and all, that the judge will recognize that too. When uh, we adopted my oldest daughter, her judge gave her a, a, a necklace. Aww. Gave her, the, the child, you know, gave my daughter a necklace Aww. for the adoption. <clears throat> yeah. And how old is the girl? She is nine, no, okay. 10, she's 10 now. Okay. And uh, mom, well, soon to be adopted mom, she is going to be looking into adopting or fostering first um, bio brother, mm -hmm. but it's gonna be a lengthy process, um, getting him into the home. And right, mm -hmm. I'll tell you something that we did with um, my other daughter is, is she got a key to the house mm -hmm. that was, yeah, she got a key to the house on a, a Disney keychain. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was sentimental to her. Ah, yeah. here comes Miss Kelly Lingo. Good morning, Miss Kelly. Good morning. I'll be on in just a second. Okie doke. I might start some music. Um, I mean, it's been forever since I've done billing. Um, but the home health manual kind of talk, talks about the services and the billing and what that looks like. And Good morning, and Robin. I just you might, you, there you go. <laughs> I'm going to play some music, but it, it might not be the kind of music everybody wants to hear. Did I hear talks of like tornado weather coming soon? I hadn't heard that. I, I, heard I hope something. not. Somebody was, I heard somebody talking about that. I hate this weather. Yeah, I hope not. <laughs> I will be right back.
Good morning. Good morning. I'm driving, so I'm going to be listening only. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Okay. I had to run my grandson home, and he's like 30 minutes away, so I was like, oh, crap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, sent out the reminder, so I'm hoping that some people maybe had forgotten and are yeah. uh, going to check in now. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, we usually start at, at about five after, so we still have a few more minutes. To... Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. I had just stopped, so I had to log in real quick. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that works, huh? Yeah. I'd rather do that than miss it. And do me a favor if everyone, well, okay. iPhone, what's your name? Jerry, it's Renata on one iPhone. Oh, uh, yeah. There's another iPhone on here too. Okay. Glasses. And... Okay, okay. What, what's your name, dear? What's your name, dear, so I can rename you? If it's me, oh. it's Patterson, but I already did that at one time. Oh, okay. Well, it says iPhone. <laughs> it's what it says. So if you can. Done it the last two times. Huh. Well, every time you call back in, if you have to rename yourself, it's probably, I mean, it, it's just not taking. So you have to, every time you come in, every time you call in. I don't know how to do that, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would do it for I'll you, it but uh, as soon as Isela gets here, she has host of it and she can change it. So good morning, good morning. It's just about five after. I hope we get a few more people joining us. Because um, I don't have control of this this morning. So how is everybody doing? Had to find my own mute button. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Jerry. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Rita. How how about the rest of you? How are we doing this morning? I'm here. I'm awake. I'm good. You're <laughs> you're awake. It's good I'm to see you guys. Weather. Oh, isn't this so much better than last week? Oh my goodness. Okay, hang on just a second. I see something in the chat that wants to send out, that wants us to look at. It says, good morning, friends. Our fellow FSP, Rashawn, wanted me to send out a quick message for her and tell you she would love prayer sent her way. She will be out for a bit and needs our prayers. So this is Rashawn, and um, we would appreciate prayers. Uh, or positive thoughts, whatever it is that uh, you guys do. Yeah, now we have them putting, putting in there, putting in the chat. We have one of our own. So, well, our meeting today is supposed to be more of a organic conversation. So, I actually received an email this morning from one of you and uh, asked me for some ideas. And I said, oh, this is the best time in the world for you to send this because today is our FSP call. And um, since it's supposed to be organic and we're supposed to just talk about this and that, whatever, um, I asked her if she would bring this question to you all. And hopefully we can have some robust uh, brainstorming on some different ideas to uh, help her out. 
So uh, let me introduce Hillary Vance. She is from the Lawton area. And Hillary, you want to kind of uh, briefly tell them what it is that you're wanting help with? Yeah, so this morning I, I just emailed Jerry and I had a question. I have a family that um, is an SOC and they have their adoption day actually this, this Friday. Um, and I was just brainstorming and thinking of different ideas or if there's anything that we can do to kind of make this event special for them or show them, you know, that it's a big deal and just kind of celebrate them. Um, just wondering if anyone has ever done that, like celebrated an adoption with a family before. And if so, what have you done? And I have found that you guys are creative and can think outside the box. So I'm gonna say, even if you haven't, if you had a family, consider thinking uh, that you had a family that's been working really, really hard and they're gonna finalize an adoption. What would you want to do to show them their appreciation and to uh, let them know that you guys are, are proud of them and support them? So one of the ideas that I was in a foster mom and I adopted uh, four of my daughters. Um, and one of the things that our caseworker did for us that was really special was she bought each of the girls a butterfly plant because I, I like to garden. And so we were able to plant it and then we still have those <clears throat> butterfly gardens um, for oh. the girls. And so then every year the butterflies come to say hi. So that is adorable. <laughs> and you know what you might actually be able to find a greenhouse that would have that would donate um, mm -hmm. some. or you know you could go to um like tuesday morning or somewhere they have those really inexpensive little boxes the real cute uh boxes mm -hmm. and get get them a gotcha box because okay. um you know, I know a lot of times in adoptions, um, they will keep stuff and they call it a gotcha box because it's on the day that they were adopted. So they have a gotcha day and a birthday and, you know, so. That's a good idea. We did a real cool um, canvas where we had a lady that's very artistic draw a tree trunk and then um, did their hand as the lead, the family, and put the parents and then the, the little pants on there. It's really cute, actually. I may have a, a picture of it at the office. And then we had the, there you can look, Google all kinds of cute sayings about um, their family tree and um, all that. It's really, it was a cute idea. Because then when they grow, when they see them, they're like, oh, look how little my I was or whatever. Very good idea. Ooh. Okay, Miss Nikki, did you have something you'd like to add for us? Sorry, no. <laughs> oh, come on. What would you want to do if you were working with a family like that to give them support and know they're appreciated and you're proud of them? Well, um, we actually had a family last year that adopted but we really didn't do anything for them. We were just kind of there, you know, just there. We didn't do anything special other than, you know, support mom and just tell her, you know, what she was doing was right because she was also adopted as a child. And so she adopted four and now she's got the other two. So she's got six now, but we really uh -oh. didn't do anything. Okay. If you could have, what would you have done? Um, I don't know. I ain't ever thought that far. <laughs> One idea might be to go get um, an adoption book. They have really, really cute ones at the bookstore and all of you guys to sign it or write a message in it, depending on the age of the kids. And then they could um, keep it um, and read it, you know, on their gotcha day, they could read it every year or something. Something like that might be fun. 
I like that. And COVID makes everything harder too, you know, so only 10 people are allowed in the courtroom and that's to include the bailiff and the judge. And so that kind of makes up 10 already with the family. So um, can't really be there. Don't forget to ask them what they might would want, you know? Yeah. Um, we, do that, we do that in graduation from the wraparound process where we ask them, you know, how would you guys like to celebrate this? And uh, and we've had everything from actual like graduation ceremonies and invited their you know family to to come and let them. We had old cap and gowns that were you know everybody keeps there, puts it in the closet, and they're like, what are we gonna do with it? Well, we had, Halloween. We had we had graduation, so but anyway. Just maybe the family having some input, asking them all, you know, how would you want to remember this day, you know? Where do you guys find the the funding for the wraparound celebrations or, you know, a celebration like this for the adoption? Of course, you know, utilize every resource that's available. You know, find resources to make something free, three ninety nine. But um, do you normally take funding out? For these celebrations? Go, Jerry. That's a Jerry question. <laughs> uh, most of our agencies have like funds available that they could do something like that. Um, so, uh, but also community um, donations. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, flex funds, community. Uh, I always made it, at least for myself, I always made it a habit of trying to do community um, donations mm -hmm. of some sort. Like when she was talking about those butterfly plants, yeah. um, that's not butterfly plants, although I love that. Um, there were times that I would go to a, a nursery or, um, you know, a Lowe's or whatever, and they would donate flowers or plants. Yeah, and a lot of times you can go to Walmart and they'll donate like a fifty dollar gift certificate, you know, a fifty dollar, um, so that you can go in and shop, you know, in Walmart for the family. So, I mean, I've had them do that before. You just have to talk to the manager that's on duty, and mm -hmm. um, typically they're pretty flexible with stuff like that. So. Okay. Yeah. And really, for the most part, I don't know no other agency for, agency for a special situation like that that would not want to uh, provide a contribution. I mean, again, it's not about the amount. It's just the fact that, I mean, you can go for $10 and, and, and really find some creative stuff. So I just think yeah. it's really about articulating what it is that you are wanting and really find a way for your agency to aid in that. That's true. I know um, here in Kingfisher, um, when we have our SOC um, graduations, I always talk to the pizza hut mm -hmm. and they always donate five pizzas. I mean, that's the max that they'll donate. And I always get the max because I let the parents take it home afterwards and that's a good thing. And then I was also, I have a, um, a DHS worker here and I'm trying to, I just texted her because I want to know what the meaning is behind it, but she gives, and you guys might know or heard of this, she gives all of her kiddos a little keychain, and it's a, it's a tennis shoe, it's a um, Converse tennis shoe, and it, it, there's a meaning behind it, and I can't, when I get it, I will give it to you, Haley, but it's really cool, like, they're not going to be walking these steps by themselves anymore, they're going to be together as a family um, type deal. Um, and it's just a little, you know, keychain that they hang with them on their backpack or whatever to remind them that they're not walking alone anymore. So, um, but I'll find out the exact meaning and okay. I'll let you know. So, Thank you. You're welcome. That's really cute, Kelly. Yeah. If, uh, where in the world would you, I've never seen a keychain with a Converse shoe on it. I probably just haven't been looking in the right place. 
Yeah, it's kind of like they're going to be going places together. They're, you know, this is not the end. This is like the new, be new beginning. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, I'll find out more, but it's really cool. And you just, she just orders bags of them. They're just Converse mm -hmm. uh, keychains, and she picks, you know, a certain color that reminds her of the kiddo or, you know, the glittery one or the unicorn one or Stars and Stripes one. I mean, she just, it's just, it's just a neat thing, you know, mm -hmm. so. Okay, well, thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Anybody else? Hey, Clifford, hey. go ahead. Um, hey, Hillary, how's it going? Hi, um, good. So I, the, I, I think the thing that I'd like to add is that, you know, almost all kids are purpose finders and meaning givers. And, and, and so they give purpose and meaning to everything in their lives. And oftentimes kids who are going through foster care or through the adoption process have, have had a lot of pain in their life. And so they, they, they give meaning to that pain. And even though that, that's usually like a, a dysfunctional thing where it can cause harm and identity issues, all that stuff. But, but in, anything that you can do that those little trinkets or items or, or tokens of any kind that you can give meaning to kind of like that shoe, like, I'm going to be, I'm going to walk with you for the rest of your life or mm -hmm. calling the day, like the got you day, anything like that makes a huge difference because, because anything that you can do to give, to give these kids positive meaning, positive purpose and positive connection and items that remind, that constantly remind them of that um, is, is pro probably, is, is probably, is probably the best thing. And I, I'd even say the cheesier, the better, the, the, the more like the, the more the, the bigger you can go like the, like like make it as bi a big celebration as possible even though they might say like oh no I don't want this just just keep it no like this is a big deal mm -hmm. and um and, and just try to make it as as memorable as possible but going again but those little trinkets and tokens and items that say this is what this this is what this means to me because of how much you mean to me like mm -hmm. those things make a huge difference yeah replacing those bad memories and things that happen to them with good ones too so yeah i told hillary with one of my daughters um the the judge gave her a necklace and uh at that day and then with another one of my daughters we had a, a big celebration where she actually got a key to the house with a uh, her favorite character at disney is winnie the pooh and so it was with a Winnie the Pooh and friends keychain with the, the key on it. And um, that was something, you know, that, that we had done too. Anybody else? Uh, yes. Um... I wanted to just say that those little small things do make a huge difference because um, like the Converse shoe and things like that, I was given a, um, a crystal snowflake when we left Minneapolis and I was in foster care, we were moving down to Oklahoma. And it's something that I'm, I'm 42 now, it's something that I have had since I was um, 12 years old. So, mm -hmm they do keep those things as, as, or we do keep those things, foster kids and adoptive kids, because um, even if it's just that small thought of that one person who cares what happens to you, it does make a big difference. And uh, I was remembering Rita telling me about the movie theaters and you can rent those out for like a hundred bucks and invite um, five or, or eight people or something like that. And you could do like a celebration like that and celebrate the gotcha day kind of big, like you, like you guys were saying. Yeah, you can actually have 20 people, Tara, in those theaters, and there's plenty of room for like social distancing and, um, you know, you have masks are required and stuff. So it's a it's a really nice little thing to do, um, especially for families that don't get out much and, you know, don't have. But it's a little expensive. So, I mean, by the time, you know, it's a hundred, it's ninety nine dollars. So. Yeah, flex funds. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Flex funds. <laughs> yeah. When you were talking about money and how to, um, some agencies, I don't know, have flex funds that you can yeah. vote on to use. Yeah. Oh. 
Jerry, is it okay if I share something? Yes, please. Um, I was just gonna say, so um, this isn't really an idea of like for the day of adoption to give to a child, but something that you can do with younger ones to kind of help them understand the time. So if there's a date set for adoption is do like a paper chain. Um, and each day that you get closer to the adoption day, you can take away a paper chain so they understand um, that the day for them to become adopted is coming. Um, so uh, I had a friend who did um, like a 30 day chain link. Um, so each day they would take off a chain and the kids would get really excited, um, you know, each day to take off the chain. And then at the end, at the adoption day, there was a very last uh, paper chain. And so it was like a way to symbolize, um, you know, their new family that they were going to be entered into. So that's a great one for little ones. Yeah, it really is. That really helps them understand more too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because it can be kind of a hard, you know, if you tell a child in a month, you're going to be adopted, um, especially yeah. for little ones, they don't really understand that. But yeah, the paper chain, I love that idea. So another thing that just popped in my head too, is maybe um, if somebody would volunteer like a photographer to take pictures the day of, that's something that people always cherish is pictures. And you don't always think about that, you know, on important days, sometimes it's just chaotic and you don't get the kind of pictures that you would like. And if somebody was there to take pictures, it's a good idea too. Mm -hmm. I like all of those ideas that you guys have. We also have uh, I'm just going to refer to it, everyone, if you want to. Um, you can read, comment, Brandy, put about Rashawn in our chat. We have one other uh, thing that we were wanting to talk about that. Uh, Hillary actually asked me, and I am really, really hoping some of you out there have an answer for her or some experience. Um, and it's on working with DR. Uh, is it DR? The Ticket to Work program. Um, okay. So it's, it's through DRS, I believe. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah. If any of you have any experience in that or no information about the ticket to work or um, anything, she would like to have more information about it. Now I'm going to ask Clifford because I wonder if, do you know if on it, if that's something on it, youth used to to uh, avail them, available, avail themselves to? Um, they used to have, Christine here, I, 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 I know that Christine was here. There, there, there was a, there, there was a program, I forgot the name of it, um, but Lin, Lindsay Horn is the one that's in charge of it now. I'm trying to think of um, IPS. They, 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 had, they, had, they had IPS, um, which is, which in my opinion is great. I don't know too much about it, but, um, but, but the reason why it, it was implemented is because we know that whenever, actually I'll share an example. There's a young man I was working with and he was just having not big, but just my, minor problems at home, minor problems at school. And it just accumulated and accumulated and his parents were, 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 pulling, were pulling their hair out. Like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? And he had turned 16 and, um, one of the things that we came up with as a solution was, why don't why don't you? He said we 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 we'd like you, we'd like to invite you about thinking about getting a job, and mm -hmm. the only place he could get a job was at the Walmart, which was down the street, and um, so he started working there. And from my end, my contact with him, like nothing really changed, but we followed up with his mom a month later, and his mom was like, I don't know what happened but my son is doing better in school. 
he's doing better at home and he's just doing so much better. And what we realized what it was, was that um, he, he got this job at Walmart and he was 16 years old. And so he was kind of like, like the young floater that everyone told to do. And, uh, but he loved it so much. And what, and what, what, what we made the connection afterwards, you know, whenever kid, whenever we have youth who are able to um, feel like they're a part of something, you know, we're talking about families, but, 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 but just on the, um, on the vocational side, but when they can feel like they're part of something, part of a team, that they have responsibility to someone who's not a caregiver, to someone who's a stranger and has that structure, man, it makes a huge difference. I know that's more the philosophy side, but the program that, that they were using was was I, IPS. I know very little about that, but there are some really, really good experts that we can refer you to that, that that's what they do. And I've heard their training. I've seen their training. It, it's fantastic. Um, but my knowledge about it specifically is very limited. Yeah. Do you know what IPS stands for? You know what? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I, I, I bet it's that independent time. something skills, personal skills. Could I, that be I, it? I, independent personal skills? It, it, it's, that sounds absolutely right, Jerry. <laughs> okay. Anyone that has direct um, experience with the Ticket to Work program? Oh. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. It's okay. Okay. Sorry. So um, a couple of years back, like 2017, um, I had my brother who has an intellectual disability enrolled in DRS services, and he had a job coach that was working with him. And my direct experience was limited as well. But basically what happens is when you seek out employment through DRS and the um, person seeking it out is on social security, social security has to approve the ticket to work. So mm -hmm. basically instead of my brother getting um, the full max amount of his social security benefits, which was like 725 at that time, the ticket to work allowed him the opportunity to gain some independence in regards to working. And um, I know that the tickets to work had to come directly from the social security office. So it was one of those things that he had to get approved for. Once he was approved for that, um, he had started working at like a tax agency. He's like the little sign guy outside, just kind of promoting them to come in and do their income taxes there. And um, again, it, it builds up their confidence. He had a job coach and it's directly linked to the social security administrative office. And so um, DRS automatically sent the paperwork over to the social security office. So we really didn't have to do anything with that. And then through the mail, we got notification that he had a ticket to work. And when tax season oh ended, he went right back in to get in his Social Security benefits. And so um, it definitely just kind of helps them to build the confidence and independence and, you know, feel normalized, like Jerry said in the chat box. And it's just an opportunity to, for them to just kind of gain some additional skills. So that yeah, was my experience. What's the age um, like limit on that? Is there an age limit? Um, I, I think it's 16 to 65. 60, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Cool. What's that, that, that's like the, the, the age of being able to work to the age of oh, retirement. retirement. Yeah. And I'm sorry, it's 18 to 64. Oh, sorry about oh. that. Oh, oh. Sorry. I so think I know you were like that are, are really important because I see a trend with families that the parents may be on social security and you know then they get the, their children are approved for social security and they see that um, they don't see beyond what's in those four walls in their home. So I think they kind of just depend on oh this is what my life is going to be like. I'm just going to depend on my social security and just make ends meet but really if they were shown that they're capable um, and if we were able to build their confidence in vocational rehab and things like that then maybe they wouldn't depend on social security so much or not at all 
I, I like I like the fact that you pointed that out. I work with a lot of families who are really, really um, reliant on their social security benefits. And it's almost used as like a crutch. And like a lot of times, like if they explore the opportunity that if they worked, they could um, bring in more income monthly, then it would definitely be, be beneficial for them. But a lot of times, like I said, it, it's kind of used as a crutch and it's very hard sometimes for me to get the young adult that I'm working with to understand the benefits of just kind of working more hours because they're really, really focused on the fact that their social security benefits will be decreased. And yeah. so I've worked with um, several different women who were well in their 40s and 50s that felt like, oh no, I can't work more than 20 hours a week because they're going to reduce my social security benefits. And so um, it, it's hard once they get mm -hmm. used to and accustomed to getting that monthly supplement to get them to engage in like um, full-time or part-time employment. And so mm -hmm. I'm glad that you pointed that out. Sorry. Anybody else? Well, I'm wondering if any of the rest of you have questions about a particular resource or uh, challenge that you have with a family, because this is a group that, that I do believe will give you some options and, and uh, brainstorm with you. I, um, I have a teenage um, parent and he's not at the age to work, but um, he wants to, he definitely wants to be there for his child. And I think I'm um, not being able to, to work right now. Um, he is in school obviously, but not being able to work um, is taking a toll on him to be able to, to provide. So I don't know if there's like, um, other resources for teenage fathers. Um, I don't know. That's why I asked what was the age, um, the age with being able to like work and things like that. Um, Cause I'm not from Oklahoma. So I think something like that would definitely benefit um, him. So yeah, I now, don't know if there's. Oak rehab starts a little earlier. And if he's in school, is he on an IEP or do you know? I don't know. I don't know. Shauna okay. is he in Oklahoma City. Yes. Well, Norman. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, I know. Um, and I don't know about childcare and stuff for him. How old is he? Fourteen. Fourteen. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's kind of really young. Wow. And that, yeah. But like fourteen. Um. I think they can work at Brahms at 14. Really? I yes, think so. they can. At and the I'm, age of 14, some, some cities will require a work permit, but my daughter started working at Brahms at the age of 14, as long as their grades yeah. are well and yeah. they have a work permit from the school. And typically that just relies on their grades, then yes, yeah, can work and keep that job. Cool. So oh, what wow. is the process of getting a work permit? Um, so my daughter just went and talked to her counselor and they checked her grades because if she had like D's or F's, they're not going to give her a work permit. Right. So as long as her grades were well, um, they would give her a work permit and she, but she applied at Brahms first. They said, Hey, we'll hire you. You've got to get a work permit. So then she went to the counselor, the counselor signed off and on a little piece of paper. And then they took that to Brahms and then Brahms hired her. And then she yeah. And also with 14 year olds, they're limited. They can only work in between certain hours of the day and certain time frames. Um, so I think if I remember right, she could work up to two, I wanna say she worked like three days a week and worked two hours on those three days. Like yeah. they're limited on what they did, but she, I'm gonna tell y'all like she just graduated last year and she had over almost four grand in her savings account when she graduated. Like we, she started putting that money back and was able to use that. But anyways, that's different. But yeah, yeah they can work at Brahms at the age of 14. 
Wow. Oh, wow. I didn't know we that. Had, we had some 13 and 14 year olds here in Guymon start like a car detailing little business since they weren't able to work, um, you know, like at a restaurant or something like that. At that time, mm -hmm. they started their own little business yeah. and made, made out pretty good with that. And he's not in high school, is he, Shana? He's in, is he? he yes, he, he, um, he is in high school. Yeah. And, um, now, you know, Emerson is an alternative school, mm -hmm. alternative high school, and they actually have like daycare there for children. And um, they help a lot of our teenagers who are homeless and the homeless population, they help them find homes and I mean, I can give you Jack Reed's contact information. He's the principal there if you'd like to call him. And Sir, sure. you know. what's the name of the high school again? It's Emerson, Emerson High. Emerson High. And what city is that in? I think it's actually Oklahoma City. I'm not positive. Yeah, it's, it's about exactly. Midtown, Oklahoma City. Okay. Okay. So I'll just put his contact information in um, the chat. And Ashley Lambert has also been putting some things in the chat that you might want to keep. Right. So I looked up the Oklahoma law right now, and the minimum age to work in Oklahoma is 14. Um, there are some different guidelines as it pertains to being under the age of 16. And it just says that they can't work more than three hours on school days and eight hours on non-school days. Um, I was pretty impressed. Like maybe a year and a half ago, I pulled up ch to Chick-fil-A. And there was a 12 year old who took my order and the 12 year old that took my order was very, very, um, uh, he held himself together very, very well. Even the fact that I was surprised that he was 12 years old working, his response to me was very nonchalant. He kind of treated me kind of like, yeah, I've been doing this for a long time, you know, <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm a big boy, you know, but very impressive. So I know that there are definitely, it's just a matter of getting him to apply. Is he physically capable to work? Are there any? Oh, yeah. No, no, none at all. None at okay. all. Absolutely. So maybe the support around um, how to interview for a job, how to dress for a job, um, how to fill out an application would be very, very good tools to work with him right now because he's not too young to work. And so if he's really focused on making sure that he can provide for his family, it's going to be hard. But I mean, it's hard to raise a baby if you're 14 or 50. I mean, kids are, you know, can't they come with lots of different challenges. And so um, if he's eager to do that, he definitely has the opportunity to. And so focusing on giving him those skills so that he could be successful in the workforce is going to be the best thing for him right now. So he's not too young. Yeah. Okay. I've got um, Kiana. Did you want to say something? And then I, uh, Clifford, you'll be after that. And then it looks like Renata's after Clifford. I was going to say um, my daughter, she actually started working at 12 with me because before I became an FSP, I was a dog groomer. And so she would come in and bathe my dogs so I could groom them. And then my boss, which is also my best friend, she would pay her too, like tip her. But then when she turned 15, a previous company had um, worked for, they asked if I wanted to come back to work. And I was like, no, but my daughter. And so they were like, does she have any experience? And I told her, told him, yes, she's been bathing dogs which is not hard like you're bathing a dog <laughs> since she was 12 and so they were like okay and they were wanting to hire my 14 year old but I was like no she's too focused on school my middle one she um does online school so it was easier for her to get away from school and do work but I mean that's always an option too if they're doing the online thing just to possibly check in with like some dog groomers because they always need bathers and it's good pay usually so they just got to be ready for physical labor because it's it's sometimes daunting because you have to pick up some heavy dogs or dogs that are kind of feisty so <laughs> but I mean that'd be a good option too to look into thank you Kiana Thank you for that. Um, Clifford, you're next. Um, Kiana, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need you to come over to my house 
and teach me how how to bathe my dogs because my dogs <laughs> like it is not like you say oh it's easy no my dog you, you, you need to come over and teach me I actually need to come over um, I'm really tired <laughs> do for do with and then cheer on because my like I I cannot do it I, I mean I I'm, I'm gonna need a whole team of people around me you 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 and your dog need to come because my dogs well I tell you what they. <laughs> anyway so, so sorry um I, um but, but the other thing i wanted to mention too is that when, when you're with anybody but especially a young person and, and and if the goal is to find them work and 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 you go with them to to to, to do this activity and to accomplish this goal with them even if you don't accomplish the goal which is getting them like employment of some kind but the process of doing it the rapport and relationship that you're that 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 you're able to build with them the strengths that could be discovered the 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 areas that you could discover that probably need improvement um with like their 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 resilience and patience and learning how to handle rejection and going in and asking for an applicant like all that whole process even if they even if you don't even if you guys don't accomplish the ultimate goal which is finding employment the potential for all the strengths that could be discovered, the relationship that could be built, it, it, that by itself is probably worth the price of admission just right there. Um, so, 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 and I know what it's like to look for a job. Um, I, I remember being, 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 being 19 years old and, um, and uh, I remember being, I remember myself being a young man, being in tears because I couldn't find a job because I was looking and looking. And um, if someone would, would have been with me, helping me through that process, man, it would have made it a lot easier. And and the young people I've worked with who I've helped find employment, they, they don't always find it uh, for whatever reason. Sometimes it's a long time, but the relationship that's built with them through that process, the strengths that are discovered in the areas of, of mentoring that you could provide is, 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 again, it's worth the price of admission just for that. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for that, Clifford. Um, Renata, did you still want to share something? Can you hear me, Jerry? Yes. Okay, sorry. I'm delivering furniture to a family. So I'm driving through town with my trailer on. So um, <laughs> I, I uh, wanted to touch on the, somebody had said something about um, learning uh, how to fill out applications and do whatever. And that is a, it's a, the boys and girls club that I work with here, um, we, they actually, we've got a, there's a program and, and, uh, there's things within the club and then they, they offer that type stuff for those, those kids that are getting of that age to where, like you talked about appropriate dress for going for an interview or, um, filling out an application or that type of stuff. But, it's also a, a great opportunity if, if you guys don't have a boys and girls club in your area, you know, you can, you can uh, have that in a, in a, actually a community type. I mean, I would say ask permission first, but a community type thing um, service that you could offer, not just only to your clients, but um, to others in the area that may not, you know, know how to fill out an application. I remember Savannah filling out her first one and uh, that type of stuff. So anyway, my brain's going a million miles an hour and I just can't take, I can't type into the chat too much unless I'm at a stop sign or whatever. <laughs> so uh, I'll be quiet, but I, I uh, oh, the livestock industry, like the sale barns, I don't know. I live like out in the nowheres, Southeast Oklahoma. But the cell barns have usually got like little cafes inside of them. They love to get the, the younger, you know, 14, 12, 14, 15 year olds doing, you know, the drinks or that type of stuff. They are real, real good to work with the youth um, and, and giving them an opportunity. Um, and then they end up keeping them on and doing, they just kind of grow within what their uh, abilities as they get a little older, they can do other things, ticket runners, that type of stuff. But anyway, I'll be quiet. No, no, no. We appreciate hearing that. I hadn't even thought about the livestock and the auctions and stuff like that because it actually gave me an idea. I know that um, golf courses a lot of times also have the, the snack bar or whatever you want to call it. 
And that might be a good place. And that might be a good place for him to meet some impressive people that might just take a good look at him, you know, and maybe give him some other opportunities down the line. Because I don't know if there's a, also a, an age limit for caddies. Could be a personal caddy of, and then that's, you know, that also is going to say um, lifeguard. I was a lifeguard like a hundred years ago and I wasn't 16. Um, you just, uh, it was, I first started out at the kiddie pool. Um, you know, of course you had to do, you had to do all the CPR training and all that, you know, whatever. But, and then as I got older, then I was put on the big pool, you know, but those type things, um, just check into what is in your area, check with your chamber of commerce, uh, or go to your local coalition and, um, advocate for them, you know, who out there's got this, who can do that, you know, whatever. So, so Miss Shana, you got a few, a few ideas out there. I appreciate you asking the question. We probably yes. have time. <laughs> We probably have time for one more that people can brainstorm. See how much information that they end up getting. So if you've got uh, a question or looking for a resource or a family that may be stuck, um, here's your team that's going to help you brainstorm. I guess I'm, I, I have a little bit of a I guess. dilemma, I guess, I'm going through. I work with a lot of families that grandparents are raising their grandchildren, their, their grandchildren, but um, particularly this client, it's great-grandmother that is raising her grandchild. Um, however, I'm finding it very difficult to... Um, I'm finding it very difficult to get her to reframe her way of thinking and um, disciplining. It's very difficult. So how do you how do you talk to someone that is very much set in their ways um, and get them to realize like, hey, maybe this worked with your children, but the way that things are and the trauma that this child has been through um, maybe this discipline is just not, it's just not working and maybe we can try something different. She's very reluctant. Hillary, I actually had a client's mother who was that way. And um, I just finally got to the point where I was very direct with her and said, you know, she said, well, I've always done this and I've always done this and I've done this and I've done this and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, and how has that worked for you? Yes. And I being di very direct is honestly the best way to go sometimes especially when you get to that point yeah mm -hmm. yeah and I mean just kind of set up some positive consequences and rewards and just ask her just to try it just for a month you mm -hmm. know just try this for a month and then let's see if it's progressing if it's progressing let's you know try it for another month mm -hmm. and then you know eventually she will start turning around and hopefully now you're talking about a great grandmother so I don't know I mean I'm a grandma so <laughs> but I don't know about great grandma actually you guys I'm fixing to be a great grandmother oh, oh well congratulations our yeah our first one so yeah and so I would like to throw out bye their bye. parenting class <laughs> what's that I would like to throw out their parenting classes oh yeah yeah. Get them in parenting classes. Yeah. Circle of security is a great one. Um, yeah. Even get yourself trained in it to where you can do your own classes with them. I mean, it's very, it's very eye opening. I am to a grandmother <laughs> and the way I parented was so much different than how they're parented now. Uh -huh. And the reasonings behind that and the emotional cups and the, you know, just educate them, especially a great grandmother, you know, a great grandmother. That's amazing in itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
What did you say the program was, the parenting program? Um, the one that I like the best is Circle of Security, um, but there's a lot out there. If you get a hold of the OSU Extension Office in your county, um, they also provide parenting classes. Um, and just, you know, which that in itself is going to be a feat trying to get them to get go to parenting classes, but it's still doable, you know, it's, it's doable. Kelly, do you know where you can go to get certified for the circle of security classes at or where I need to look at? Um, I don't even remember who had that training. Was it the state, Jerry? Yes, it was. Okay. And I do not, I don't think it's on the radar to bring them back anytime soon to bring that back. But the social security is zero to five. I mean, it's for the itty bitties, but you can, you can um, tweak it to fit even the older kids. And then there was another one that was called active parenting. And that one was mm -hmm. done at OSU at Stillwater. Yes. And it is a good one as well. And that's where we made these little mindfulness tools. <laughs> Shake and it I up. Shake it up. Yeah. I keep it handy at the, my desk. The kids play with them. Um, little oil things. But active parenting in OSU, that's where we made these. That, but um, that's what I would suggest biggest is parenting classes because it just it's a, just a different mindset when you go and you're being taught something that you don't know have never heard of <laughs> so but yeah I'm wondering Kelly because it sounds like you used circle of security with uh, some of your families individually have you ever um, made a PowerPoint or showed some of the things, um, the shark, you know, the shark music or anything like that? Would you be willing to maybe share some of your tools about circles of security at a call? Well, I mean, it is, a, it's all online. You know, once you take the class, all of it's online. So, I mean, and that's, okay. we've done group um, Zoom trainings as well. Um, there's just two of us in our office that are trained to teach it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of like, um, I don't know, if, if you wanted to, Haley, I can meet with you and we can, it's just a eight weeks course. So it's just eight hours. I mean, I would be willing to help you out and, you know, show you things. Um, I don't, wouldn't mind that at all. Okay. Yeah. Why don't y'all put your emails in the chat and that way you guys can communicate your, well, your contact information, because you can put your phone numbers too, if you'd like, um, in the chat. So you guys will be able to uh, get in touch with each other. And I know that, I believe it was last week, we had uh, some of you that was asking for mentors. And some of you volunteered to be mentors. I want you to know we are working on that. Yeah, we are wanting, uh, we are working on that. So let me see if there's anyone else. I've got Amanda Harris that wants a mentor and we've already hooked that one up. Jessica Carter, Leanne Hauser, I seen you on. Are you still, you still want someone that could mentor uh, another FSP that you could get connected with? Leanne, if you're trying to talk, you're on mute. I also have Siobhan Jefferson, Carol Jensen, 
and Sherry Malachi. And before any of the rest of you leave, I want to be able to uh, do this poll. Oh, please, please, please answer this before you leave. It gives us some ideas. As you're doing this, we're probably going to be able to let you go a little bit early, but I want to remind you, um, one of your own is asking for positive thoughts and prayers, Rashawn, and um, just want to remind you of that. So what would you guys like for next week's um, conversation? I just need a couple more of you to answer the poll, please. I don't know if this would be related to next week's session, but are there any programs that um, are related to youth that we can take youth to, to kind of just promote that peer support within their community? just like a group that they can go to to have somebody to talk to that they can relate to. Um, I know before COVID we, we did little groups here, but. Um, yeah, Hillary, yeah. that is one of the things that we've been doing is reaching out to different sites and agencies and um, recommending and trying to support different sites to have the, the, peer type of uh, support groups. And for youth groups, um, it, any time that we have talked with you guys about support groups, we're talking about a support group that is not curriculum based, mm -hmm. that kind of like our FSP call today, this, this, was, this is an example of a support group mm -hmm. is what we've done today. And um, youth, really like that. If you have some youth and young adults um, that would still connect even virtually, virtually is more challenging, but um, yeah. So um, Jerry, my agency, we have a youth group and we also have a, um, a parent support group. Um, the turnout for the parent support group has not been um, too good <laughs> but um, as far as like the peers and the the young youth support group it's been pretty it's it's been pretty good the turnout's been pretty good so um, I don't know if I should put my um, I don't have the information right in front of me um, it's in my email it's just a zoom link like like a week before um, our group will just email um, the information and they'll just log just like this they'll just log yeah. into the zoom um, I don't know how, I don't know if I should put my email in the chat or how, how to get the information to the other FSPs. Okay. Are you wanting to invite them to yes. work with you or are you wanting to invite them to attend one of the meetings? Well, I apologize. <laughs> so I'm inviting them to attend um, one of the meetings. So if there's any parents okay. that would like to um, I know every agency doesn't have support groups, so if there's any parents that would like to attend our support group, it's definitely open to the public, um, and same goes for the youth as well. Okay. Well, Shana, I appreciate that. I would love for you to send it. I would be more than happy to, um, to join your group, too. Mm -hmm. And maybe you and I can get together or Kim, I think Kim is your, not that I wouldn't help, but I believe Kim is your site um, family person. If you're interested, uh, I really would see about getting Kim and you connected. Could you put your email address in the um, chat? your email address and, and say, Kim, contact me because we always save our chat. 
<laughs> so we won't lose it. And uh, to tell you guys, we are officially at 11 o'clock. So feel free to um, go on about your day. Have a wonderful day. Or if you need to talk to any of us, we will stay on here until the last one um, clicks off. So thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye-bye. Shana, I'm just waiting for your email because um, yeah. we have groups also that <laughs> I'd really like.